Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new educational video. So glad you joined us today. Make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button as we continue to bring you all the educational content that we possibly can. Uh, really interesting topic to have a discussion about today. Charting timeframes, a topic that we get a lot of questions on. What do we use? What time frame are we using? Why are we using those time frames? How do we incorporate you know, some of the higher time frame levels within the smaller time frames? Lots to get to when it comes to charting time frames. Let's bring in Neil and Sean here and get going. And guys, uh, you know, this is a uh, part of being a trader, obviously, is going to require the use of charts and finding levels that we can use as significant or key levels, as we like to talk about on the show, uh, off of those charts. So let's get into charting time frames here. First of all, what chart time frame is your favorite? Both of you, I'll, I'll give you a shot to answer here. And and uh, you know, as far as multiple time frames are concerned, maybe let's let's talk a little bit about how we use different time frames throughout the show. Right. Okay, so to give your favorite one, most people are going to say, "What's your favorite for uh, looking for key levels, and what's your favorite for executing trades?" I, I think. Uh, for executing trades, it's probably going to be a leaning towards the three minute uh, earlier in the day, the one. Uh, and, and then when it comes to key levels, I really always like making sure I have a check at the daily chart. You know, it's always important to keep in mind, first and foremost, a chart is simply a reflection of all of the past transactions that have happened. And uh, changing, uh, you know, from a one minute to a five minute to a 10 minute doesn't change what happened in the stock. It doesn't make it more or less volatile. It's just showing you a different look at what happened. Sometimes it's going to show you less information. Sometimes it's going to show you more information. But what actually happened in the past happened in the past. And there's no way that you can change it just by dropping something down in your menu and changing it from 1 to 10. So that's the first thing to always consider there. Yes, you have to consider multiple type time frames, especially as a day trader. Uh, uh, but you always got to keep in mind, you're only looking at things in the past. And no one uh, indicator or one chart is going to be the, uh, uh, the golden goose or give you that. So uh, you know, we're going to give you an idea of what we do on the show. I would try to be very, very transparent about the charts that we use, uh, certainly. Uh, but I'll, I'll stick with usually the three minute if I have to give an answer uh, when it comes to ex executions, Brennan. Yeah, exactly. And I think uh, an important point that Neil brought up there is, you know, a picture tells a thousand words. And when you're looking at a chart, that's really just what it is. It tells you the story of what has happened in the past. Not one time frame is going to give you that, you know, like magical bean in the beanstalk here. You know, you got to be able to read charts, have a look, see where the trades are coming from, and see key levels, right? I'm actually going to give you guys a little bit of a uh, tip here, and I talk about it on the show all the time. 12 minute. I like a 12 minute chart. The reason why it gives you multiple days, right? And I like to look at a little bit. Everything grayed out here is after market, and then you have in market. So it goes by days, and I like to look at from, and again, we're talking about time frames. When we talk about, I like to look from, you know, four o'clock, and again, all of this is going to be Eastern time. So 4 p.m., I like to see what happens between that and about 5.30, then start up again at 7.30 and run our way till 9. And I like to do division of colors here. So uh, white is going to be in the middle of the day, and then this gray is in the after and pre-markets extended hours trading. So I like to look at them all. You get key levels. Why a 12-minute? Just a little bit clearer for me on key levels. And again, it just... It bunches up some of the wicks. When you're looking at a three minute or a five minute, like what Neil was talking about, even a one minute as well, what can happen is it just gets a little crazy. This 12 minute is very easy to see. Like, I'll go back here. This is Carnival. You can go back and see right here, like $20. It was a level there. It was also a level. Then it was a level a few days later. Um, bumping up here, 1950, a level, a level. You can go back and see different time frames. Sometimes, guys, even though we're day traders and we get flat at the end of the day, looking at multiple time frames and periods definitely advantageous. I like a 12 minute. It just divides up the candles and for me gives a real, real clear level. Like, for example, here's CCL today. Break 1650. This is yesterday. Then this is two days ago. So you got to be able to see that, look, it bounced right here, 1650 a couple days ago, which is why we loved it on a breakdown today where it goes all the way to 1566. But look, you go all the way back, and this goes back to, this is 13 days ago. You see that 1650 was also an issue back here. So sometimes looking at multiple time frames and larger time frame scales, in my opinion, definitely can give you just that little more confidence 
confidence on where key levels are located. So a couple of key points there to uh, reiterate. I think uh, the very, very first one and very important one is uh, play around with uh, time frames. You know, the, the standard ones that kind of come out of the box, if you will, are going to be the one minute, the three minute, the five minute, 15 minute, you know, 30, 60 daily kind of uh, time frames. But as Sean was just saying, sometimes you might feel a little bit better when it comes to what you're looking at by messing around with it. I actually like the 12 to kind of 13 minute even period in between a 10 minute and a 15 minute. It just provides you with a little bit more information and a little different look when it comes to that kind of medium time frame uh, a look when you're when you're going out to uh, higher time frames. Speaking of higher time frames, I want to get into how we incorporate both higher time frame views with smaller time frame trading. So Neil touched on having an execution time frame and i think that's a very very key uh phrase and a key point everyone should have a, a chart that they're looking at that they actually execute trades off of so in in our case you know neil said three minute you'll hear a lot of people talk about the one minute time frame even to execute time frames but we got to figure out why we're executing trades first of all and that's going to come from guys higher time frame levels so let's talk a little bit about first of all you know, the difference between maybe a 60 minute and a daily chart and how we go about finding those levels on those charts. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you're going to hear us all, all the time on the show start off by saying, yeah, just having a quick look at the daily here and then seeing this level, blah, 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 whatever it might be. And I'm going to show, uh, show you American Airlines because, you know, there was an important $14 area that we were talking about the last few days. And, you know, American made this nice, crazy move. And I'm not going to talk about the, uh, the cross and the moving average here. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. But it turned bullish, made a huge move from about $12 all the way past 20 so parabolic to the upside, and then starts coming coming off and as it did that retraces this gap it bounced off of just above 14 you can see this one huge down down day three down sessions in a row and bounced off of 14 so after it makes this move as it comes down again you know obviously i'm going to be looking at that 14 level that's the first inkling i'm going to have uh, the other thing you can do there and you just mentioned brendan is have a quick look at another time frame like the 60 minute just to have a better idea of what went on around that bottom. It dipped into it heavily and then bounced on an absolute dime turning around. And then this is what happened when it actually broke it. A lot of chop uh, the first day. Really, really difficult to take it. And this would have been yesterday's session. But once we opened below that, I knew I wanted to be bearish and selling off of this name, uh, so I identified on the daily chart, you looked at the 60 minute just to confirm uh, that there were a couple of cracks here and it had a lot of trouble getting through that level, but I'm not going to execute off a daily chart. You can see my executions today, completely mean meaningless and nonsensical uh, on American Airlines. We talk about execution time frames and I said one in three minutes, but I'm going to show you the one minute here for a very good reason. At the open, you don't have as much data and you have so many orders coming through uh, per second that some people will use individual ticks that come off every microsecond as a chart instead of one minute. But the reason I like the minute is look at this first move up. It tests back to that 14 level that I liked, didn't quite get there, and then comes back in. Usually, I'm looking to see it put in a lower high and then jump into the short, uh, give it to that 14 area. But look at how many times it rubs up to this 1380. One, two, three times the next few minutes, four times you want to call it, then goes to the downside. That's going to be a little bit more convincing than if I drop the time frame here and go from the one minute to, say, the five minute chart. If I then go to look at the exact same setup, well, look what it looks like here. It looks like it just kind of spiked up and then tested that pre-market level and slammed right back down. It's going to be difficult to execute based off that if it's all you're looking at. If when you looked at the one minute chart here, what it showed you was some actual resistance around this price as it slammed down, probably trapped some people short and then ran back upside and then tested this level a few times and hung around. That's plenty of time to execute. That's why, especially earlier on in the day, I like to execute off the one minute. Now, when you get later on in the session here, and we'll probably hope, have a chance to talk about this, when you get halfway through the day, you want to increase your time frame as a day trader. I would execute off the three minute a little bit later on because look at this setup here. It looks, oh my gosh, how are you averaging into this little trade? Well, if you drop to a three minute chart instead of the one minute, and then you look at that exact same execution, well, it's a little bit easier to see how we're using the same type of level that we had earlier 
and then it's bunching up, and then it makes one little test here. Uh, in the longer time frame, that's an easier short. You've got the level at 1370 you're working off of. It's very calm because you're expecting to be in the trade a longer duration, closer to lunchtime. So it's a lot easier to have the confidence to get into this trade, work into it within that range on the three-minute time frame. And it would look even better on the five minutes. So start with that one, or some people use a tick chart. I don't. Uh, and then later on in the day, you move up for your executions. Uh, so for me, it's very, very important to understand executions on those different time frames, Sean. Uh, I mean, 100%. You definitely want to be able to look at different things. And, you know, the most important thing about anything that we talk about is get comfortable, right? Get comfortable looking at charts and looking at a strategy that fits your personality, your time frame the best. I think Neil just did a great job there talking about a bunch of charts. But, uh, Brendan, you did mention also talking about uh, daily chart. So what I have on here right now, and look, we've just gone through a big event. I don't have to tell you guys uh, what's just happened here with uh, coronavirus and whatnot, but look at CCL. This is the thing. We don't execute trades based on daily charts. 100% correct on that one, Neil. What I'm looking for here is just key levels of support and resistance, and we can draw a line right here. I mean, look at Carnival. No one can predict where this thing's going down to $9 here on this kind of an event, but if you are coming in, and let's just say this is February 24th, random it's bounced off one, two, three, four times off of 41, 4150 here. So when that cracks down, if you are a little bit more of a holder, maybe a few days, or even you want to hold it for the length of the day, just for a day trade, like get in at 930, out at four, that's what I mean by the length of the day, you can notice once this level breaks, the very next day, guys, I mean, this goes from 41.50 on the break all the way down to closing at 37 and change. So 37.80, the exact number doesn't really matter. But that's a 4 or $5 break. So that is more than these 10 days combined right here on one day of a break. And then you get a very, very similar pattern down here. Bangs off the bottom, hits the bottom, hits the bottom, then breaks back upside. And then we settle down at 11.45. This gives you, again, another spot. If you're looking to say, where do I go long on a name like this? Look at a daily chart, and then you're going to see bottom pickings, right? Hit it here at $11, going upside. To sum it up, basically, daily charts are great to find key levels of past breakouts and then use them as indicators of where you may or may not want to begin to execute your trades, Brendan. I love that look. I love that idea as well of uh, going out to the higher time frames to find those levels that come into play over and over and over again. And you'll hear us talk about it on the show all the time. Here's a key level. Here's a key level. That's how we do it. We go out to the higher time frames. We identify those key levels. And then we come into the intraday time frames and figure out how we're going to trade around them. There's a little bit of a look, guys, at uh, some of the time frames as far as charting uh, is concerned that we use here and uh, use them on a daily basis. I just wanted a, a quick note on uh, noise. A lot of people will talk about price action or price noise on a chart. Uh, very simply, you know, the, the smaller the time frame, the more price action, the more noise you're going to see. Same trades are taking place, obviously. On a higher time frame, those trades just contained within maybe one or two candles. Smaller time frame, going to get a lot of wicks and up and down movement. So have multiple time frames that you're using regardless of uh, your style of trading. Hope that helped, guys. A little bit of look at uh, charting time frames. Take it away, Valeria. Hey Brandon, and thank you for this great explanation. Guys, please subscribe to this channel and join our live trading show every day at 9 a.m. Eastern Time.